man. Fire as track, baby. Fire as track. Um. Nope. Thank you. I definitely want to say, uh, all six of these tracks were pretty cool. Of course, the Zach Levine one was kind of like a promotional thing. Um, you could say Secret Sins was kind of like a nice holdover. He did do a track like that, in a much more chill vibe. So, in a sense, he kind of covered that, but I really would have loved to have seen, um, uh, and I know he's already done Geechee's story, the explosions, and the prayer, which really did cover a lot about ground on Jeek, uh, um, Nico's uncle's kind of background. But uh, two tracks I definitely would have loved to see, love to see, just get more exposure and get more love. Not just being on like the album, but like even more like radio play and all that. I think one should have been pro. And the other one should have been Guilty of Dedication. I mean, those two tracks went in hard. He did a music video for Guilty of Dedication. The one time, like, I don't think he's ever done a music video before. Like, the dude tends to hide his face. He's not more about, like, projecting himself out there. Until, like, later on. But, um, for a fact, I can tell you that those two tracks were legit fire, man. Legit. Um... I'm still hoping, holding hope out there that one Nico will come back to his old ways of just killing, you know, the rap game with bars, at the bars on, you know, his traditional signature sounds of, you know, dark, murky vibes with, you know, melodic pan band passes, um, telephone effect of 808s going up and down around the scale, the distorted guitar playing, uh, and of course, the beautiful reverb that he always has, always, that just gets you just like feeling like you're either in outer space or sometimes even like deep under the sea. Um, that and two, I want to see Nico Lafray and Johnny Rain really collab together. Like, not just make a track here or there, even though that would be a good start. A good start. It's just kind of like replenish that, that um, chemistry that probably is a bit rusty but is definitely not unattainable um and once they kind of you know i guess loosen up some uh some uh what's the word i'm looking for i'll just make up my own thing loosen up some unstretched muscles i think it would, would be a great great uh step towards for both of them even um to do a collab project together because I'm telling you like few artists you know few have tried where they made you know collab project with an R&B singer and a rapper and that shit would click or anything like that of course the most famous one that everyone knows is Jay-Z and R. Kelly doing uh, I believe was it Face the World I might have gotten that title wrong but other than that uh, the most recent one is definitely Chris Brown and Tyga. Uh, Fan of the Fan Mix, it was really good. It was really popping hot. Um, the album, not as much uh, rave and as like explosion as the uh, mixtape, but it, you know, it definitely was uh, still kind of like, it still had like that connect to it because of the, you know, the previous installation just being that damn good. But yeah, um, I think both attempts by yeah Jay Z, R. Kelly, and Chris Brown and Tiger could be topped by Nico Lafray and Johnny Rain. Those two just get in the studio. It don't even have to be like a freaking full you know LP or like 15 tracks. You could just make it an EP, a short EP. I'd say at least 10, 10. Just aim for 10 tracks, it's 10 solid tracks, and just let it go. See where that goes. If people fuck with it, they're gonna be they're gonna want more, and it's a good way to test the waters too, because then it's not too short, where it's like, really, but at the same time, it's not too long, so that way, it, you know, 
if things don't work out well or people might get too which I would find hard like these guys like I said they do different tracks they can go from some you know trap into like club joints to like just turn up I mean fuck it um yeah but definitely like I would, I would go there I would love to see them do that and uh yeah it'd be fun but yeah uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh EP mixtape that I uh personally made um after this, for the next episode, I will hit the last major project that Nico Lefray released. And, of course, under the name Nico Lefray. And that project is called Troubled Soul. Um, blame the City. I almost got my tongue twisted there because I tend to confuse that with another project that has a similar title by Tory Lane's uh, Conflicts of My Soul. The 416 story. It's it it happens, man. But um no, definitely will uh, next episode we'll cover Troubled Soul Blame the City. Um uh, I will play the uh deluxe edition version that you rarely would hear. I mean like I, they had it on iTunes and then I guess for some reason they took it down. But um for sure you guys are gonna enjoy it. Uh just be be ready because this is a 20 track joint even though not all tracks are going to be long but it's 20 tracks so you're going to be sitting through this like you would sit through like Starboy for example So, but it's going to be worth it definitely going to be worth it um, you're not going to feel like it's going to be the same kind of vibe over and over again but I will save that for the next video um, dope EP I made uh, let me see if I can upload the project I'm still trying to get my laptop repaired, but um, I could probably try to do it through my phone. I will try to upload it onto um, Google Drive and then have that as a link available for anyone who wants to probably download the six track EP and they can just freely download it and uh, listen to it to their own pleasures at their own time. But, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy this and uh, this is your boy Drew Blue. Signing out. Until next time, y'all. Deuces.